Good afternoon and welcome to our 30 p.m. April 19, 2022 special meeting of the City Council. I would like to ask the clerk to call. Coming? Here. Brown? Here. Meyer? Mayor Watson? Present. Our first item on today's agenda, the 2022 Legislative Program Manual platform. For members of the public who are streaming this as an item like to comment on, now is the time to call in using the instructions on the The order will be a presentation by staff, followed by questions from council, and then we will take public comment and return to council deliberation and action. I have allotted 45 minutes for this item, and I would like to welcome Elizabeth Smith, our communication manager, to present this item. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor and members. I'm going to share my screen. Okay, um, we are fortunate today to also have um, our federal legislative consultant, uh, Chris, Chris, I always screw up your last name, Helio, and, um, and uh, Chris, do you want to turn on your camera and say hello? Hello, thanks for having me. He's here and will answer any questions that you have about our federal, federal program. Um, and unfortunately, our colleague from the Guapo group is not joining us today. You'll have to excuse me. I'm having a weird allergy attack right before I got on the meeting. So sorry about that. Um, <clears throat> so we'll start with a little bit of background. And I'll quickly go through this to leave time for conversation. Um, you know, we the program and platform, legislative program and platform is not new. Um, it is is something that the council has been adopting uh, for for several years, as I understand it, and um, and so what this is is an update the legislative session for its legislative year, um, and uh, it's it's basically intended to be a guide so that we can act swiftly as new legislation comes forward. Um, that we have your direction for how we should be engaging on advocacy positions um, and and conveying our priorities to our legislative. Um, we were fortunate, uh, I think this is an example of how it takes a village to do anything in government, which is uh, we were fortunate to really have some, some positive uh, successes that, that came out of the last year. Um, $14 million in American Rescue Plan Act funds, $1.4 million for homelessness assistance from HUD, and that was you know, letting our legislators know uh, what our priorities are and, and what we're um, wanting to do with, with our ARPA funds. Um, we received a PA earmark that was Congressman Panetta um, for the water meter replacement project that created 11 jobs. Um, and then at the state level, the unstuck applications, and one of those big applications was for the Pacific Station project where we were able to um, work with the agency that was um, granting the funds and explain um, our our case and then also and that basically unlocked the application so that we were successful and then last but not least um, through former mayor Myers continuous advocacy along with that of staff and um, and our legislators being responsive to us we received 14 million dollars from the state for the homelessness response work um, that you recently approved so we'll go into the platform you know the the guiding principles are pretty simple. Um, basically, when it comes down to it, it's all about. So where we are right now is a lot of big ambitions as a city. Um, we are working on some really important critical bits, um, and there are 
funding opportunities out there in the world that we want to go grab for that those things that the council prioritizes, that our community prioritizes, are funded, and we're, we're able to. So specifically on the legislative priorities, you'll see that these track exactly with where you've been spending a lot of your time um, around addressing housing, sustainability, and resilience. Um, making sure that we have a strong infrastructure and a resilient infrastructure, and then the economic vitality of up and down business to, to the individuals. individual. Um, in terms of how we're going to go about this, already been going about here um, in, in trying to move on things that we care about, bring in that thing, direct engagement with lawmakers, that, that can range from letters from the council, um, which I know that you've already done several this year, um, testimony, public testimony, or even legislation. Um, building coalitions, so working with other An example of that um, that we have already done this year is working with Santa Monica and sidewalk vendors, where that our voice around our environment. Um, and then, you know, building coalitions locally, but also building coalitions across. The and then the last is having those federal and state agency connections, like we saw the benefit from the um, um, For uh, another way that we engage is through these community funding requests. This is a federal process. Um, we are able Make requests of our senators and our and our on that are important to us. As I mentioned, we had the water replacement project last year um, that was funded. Process um, put in our request. They map priorities. Tax Station North, the library mix project, both of those on the house. Um, regional workforce development, and that's a, a green jobs uh, initiative. Homelessness response and wild. Um, just a note on this that the future availability of these type funds really swings side of politics. And so uh, depending on the November elections, we'll see if we can do this again next year. But um, we have put in our request through that. Um, you heard about this in the um, homeless response action plan conversation, but the idea of bringing forward a coastal coalition really focus on systems change. So um, make sure that we are, uh, we are gathering together with cities who are experiencing some of the same things, really advocate for the special that we have as a um, and develop a shared advocacy. You know, thinking about that systems change, it's really about what is the direct funding for cities and how, how can we advocate for that what are the new funding formulas that we should be pursuing given our situation on the coast or our situation as a um, as a county seat? What we should we be holding the state accountable for doing um, around mental health crisis response and 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 the in the issue there among other things? And then um, figuring out what our local response mechanisms could be. Are there are there uh, is there legislation that can make it easier for easier for us? manage the issue of homelessness in our um, I'll walk through a few pieces of legislation that I'm tracking right now. This is not exhaustive. It's a there is so much there's thousands of bills, over a thousand bills in the, going through the legislature right now. So um, you'll see that these track to our sort of key topic, but I wanted to let you know that my eye is on them, working with our um, on um, one is just making sure that we're squeezing every bit of funding that we can out of the Infrastructure and Jobs Act at the federal level. So our water infrastructure, our public work, so we're looking at those. Um, Chris is excellent about letting us know when funding opportunities we are tracking. Um, one that I think you guys are already familiar with is S886, which is about uh, CEQA exemption for universities. Um, I know that uh, city manager Huffner is, is working. working. Um, 
Uh, there is SB 1290. That's the legislation that uh, we had input on with Santa Monica um, that will allow for more sort of local regulation around sidewalk, the time manner, our our environment. Um, SB 989 is a, a grant funding opportunity around uh, green jobs for climate resiliency and career pathways. Um, SB 1416 and SB 965 is around uh, expanding the definitions of and actions around um, mental illness, uh, the definition of what is gravely disabled, requiring safety. Homelessness and housing were the top uh, issues, I think, like coming through the legislature, not surprising. It's on everybody's it's at the top. Um, here's a few. Um, one is a not a not a bill, but it was an initiative, um, and it's ACA 14, which would basically dedicate five percent of general fund revenues to set aside a something really um, that could benefit for a city like. Um, there's a, a number of bills dealing with um, the shelter crisis. One uh, from Phil Ting to 11 is really focused on mandating that localities that have a higher per capita um, homelessness rate than that of all the other 49 states. The average of the 49 states would be mandated to put themselves in a shelter crisis. And there's a number of reporting plan requirements along with that. Um, there's a several bills that are tracking around reporting and reporting requirements. Additional um, there's a bill about going moving through the legislature now with about the protection of parkland. So, um, for example, the bench land encampment would be uh, covered by this, where it would allow local government to um, in the name of the environment, remove that were threatening the environment. Um, there's a bill around making time forgiveness for for people experiencing through RVs, helping our folks RVs get in compliance through a fifteen hundred forgiveness. Um, a CEQA exemption for shelters. So as we think about a navigation, this would really help for us. Really getting that on board. Um, grant grant programs, outreach, and in police departments. Um, and then uh, the uh, an interesting one that I I'm going to dig into and haven't haven't gotten into yet is AB 31, which would allow an agent like the City of Santa Cruz to say to another agent, your homelessness policy have created an un for for our agent give would stand. And then as we just wrap up on housing, there's a number of things around housing production. The, the key message is we need more housing. We're going to do legislation that that allows that. Um, and and the downside of that for us is that much of that legislation local. So um, so you've got uh, on the on the positive side fund, state approved affordable housing project coming through. Um, there's a uh, loosening of ADU standards and heights. Um, adaptive reuse by right is saying that it, uh, if we're re reusing, adapting and reusing a parcel of land, it doesn't matter what the zoning is. If it's going to be affordable housing, it can move forward. So again, that's that local control. Um, uh, streamlined permitting in the zone, which uh, would only impact ADUs, affordable housing, and shelters, so navigation. It would basically strip away local, and um, there are prohibitions on affordable housing impact fees proposed. Which um, basically any any uh, municipality that doesn't have density or greater um, would be acceptable to legislation. Basically, we would. Affordable housing, which could really line, and then um, 
on the flip side, there's a grant program for waiving and deferring affordable housing impact. So clearly people are coming at it from different angles, carrot and stick as they risk. So some, just some deadlines to keep in mind. Uh, these bills are going through committee right now. Um, May 6th is the deadline for policy to be done with their bills and May 10th is the, is the deadline for fiscal committee. Um, and then they, all the bills have to be out of the House board having been heard on the the House board. So I think that's when we'll get a sense of really what, from all those thousand bills, what have we, what have we whittled down to priority? Um, the budget bill has to be passed by midnight in California on the 15th. And then um, that both the houses have to be done with all their bills on the 31st, governor or veto by the so I've talked a lot. The only re the only recommended action that we have for you is that you approve the legislative program. And, but I'm here to answer any questions that I know Chris is. Thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, I'm I'm really glad you were able to include Senator Edmond um, two of the bills the eight package deal on um, behavioral health, expanding the definition of gravely disabled. I've been following that one as well. Um, let's see, I'm going to skip out number 121. Mayor, I think Member Myers had her hand up first. But next. I'll go ahead and start with Council Member yeah. Calentari Johnson. Okay, that sounds good. Um, this is sort of a broad question to you, Elizabeth, and, and maybe Chris. So some of these, um, I think, would have positive, a lot of these have positive impacts in our local community. Um, and I know often there's legislation that are mandates about funding. I'm thinking about specifically um, expanding the definition of gravely disabled. What does that look like in terms of mental health response? And um, how will local communities, how will our capacity and resources be built so that we can uh, implement the state? That's just one example. Yeah, I mean, I think that, that that's, here's the rub, right? And so what, what when uh, the legislation comes forward and there's been funding to it is, Limited to, I would say so. I mean, I think that, um, I think that that's a that's a real issue. Many of these bills do that do acknowledge that they are a local, local mandate um, for folks. And um, yeah, it's. Just, I think we have to see where it goes. I don't know, Chris, if you have uh, experience with your municipalities around these sort of mandates that come. Uh, thanks, uh, Council Member. It's nice to see you. Uh, you know, on the, on the federal level, Congress does like to kind of enact new rules and regulations, any kind of funding behind it. Uh, it, it doesn't seem to be as cute as it is to take, you know, thousands of bills that are that are all dealing with, but it happens. You know, I, I'll give you a couple of examples that I think are continue to be the biggest one on the federal level, telecommunications. Uh, and the FCC trying to you know, sort of erode local control over uh, your for um, like such exciting uh, polls, things like that. Uh, as we see increases in technology in areas like drones and autonomous vehicles, it's also kind of hurt by those industries to get themselves with any local you know, responsibilities. Uh, uh, so those are things in that Thank you. Thank you. Member Myers. Um, thank you. And um, so uh, I guess I just want to um, congratulate staff did last year. Is dollar. That's founding. So 
thank you to our staff. It just goes to show, I having a legislature, especially on a year like last year. Um, I, my question is actually Matt. Um, I really very by your idea. idea of creating, you know, multi-city worship around um, and I just wonder if you to that a little bit. Um, I was mayor, I talked to um, and so, you know, there was sort of an in more casual set of talk. Um, several of us participated in the Water Act. Quality issue. So, just curious if you can give us a little bit more detail on it. Because the other thing that every post there um, that I talked about was the role of how how Caltrans manage basically how people enter exit our city so it does oftentimes that's where, that's the first thing people see when they get off the phone so I'm just curious how trans plays in for some air health Because so many, so many of the cultural properties, not only in the city but in the county, can fight against the population. Yeah, thanks for the question, Councilmember Myers. I'm happy to speak to it. Um, we know from our own experience that the issue of homelessness affects coastal communities and disproportionate um, on several several fronts. Um, and in, and in uh, practical ways as well as you're describing in our partnership with Caltrans, corridors, not just Santa Cruz, but throughout coast um, state. Um, the same could be true for our relationship with the Coastal Commission and uh, many of the policies that set forth um, ways in which homeless, homelessness impact our coastal region as well as our watersheds as well. And many of the environmentally um, sensitive habitats uh, that encompass uh, not just Santa Cruz, but our, our neighbors up and down the coast. So the idea behind this is for Santa Cruz to really serve in a, a leadership role, engage with the other communities uh, in California that act in similar ways to Santa Cruz. Um, stand our voice in Sacramento. Uh, many of the bills that Elizabeth described earlier are making their way through the process. Identify areas that we may be able to help sponsor legislation, address unique uh, concerns that we have as a people community, and see if we can uh, really get some traction uh, in that work across. The so that's the spirit behind it. We're, we'll also, of course, be engaging with Cal Cities on that work. We've already had some conversations with local rep lessons on that front as well. A lot of work there to be done, but we're um, we're excited about the effort. That's a lot of. That's my. Thank you. Are there any other questions, council members? All right. At this time, I will go out. Our attendees. And if you are interested in commenting on 2022 legislative program manual platforms, raise your hand by dialing star nine on your phone or select hand on the webinar controls on your computer. When it's your time to speak, you will hear an announcement that you have unmuted and the timer will be set for three minutes. And I see a hand raised, and the name is Reggie Meister. Hi there. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, welcome. 
Hi. Um, I, you know, I don't know where to begin with this. Um, I'm just really disturbed at the notion that our executive branch is like seeing our resources and lobbying the state to try to create legislation that I think serves the coastal region. And it sounds like focus on the environment and not on serving the houseless folk who are our residents, who 75% of which know became house in the city. And now we sort of, they've gotten too poor and we don't care about them. We care more about what main, like, standard of our beaches now. Like, and I mean, who's giving city managers this authority to use our public funds to help lobby the state for these pieces of, like, for a lack of better term, go fascist style legislation? Um, you know, this is really, like, disconcerting, like, what I would like is I don't think the city manager would have any ability to lobby state level legislatures. Uh, and in, in fact, I think there's a California constitutional uh, code that says you can't do that. <laughs> so I would look at that. Um, and I would also, I mean, at the very least, I mean, I know like pretty council agree with me, but at least let city council one to lobby state. Like keep it in the same branch of government, please. <laughs> like we've got the police writing their own reform laws and then city council just kind of passing them. We've got city manager writing the laws that think should apply to them. Um we've got you know that weird council rule that came up where basically suggestion is is that city staff should prepare a bunch of uh, a bunch of policy details and there should be few questions to the public little public comment, and there should be no uh, amendment and so I mean this just seems like a transparent executive overreach and it's being assisted by legislators right now and I would like not so I guess I'll say that, Jane, because I know it's anyways, but I, I've Thank you for your input. Are there any other questions that would like to comment on the legislative program manual and platform agenda item? for us. Press star nine to raise your hand. Okay, seeing none. I will bring it back to uh, council. And are there um, any council members that would like to move the motion? Yes. Councilmember Cummings. I'll go ahead and move the staff right. Councilmember Myers. No. We have a first Councilmember Cummings, a second by Councilmember Myers. And I will bring it now to, for discussion. Uh, Council Member Brown. Thank you, thank you, Mayor, and thank you for the presentation, um, Elizabeth, to Chris as well, and all the work you do in Sacramento. I just wanted to make a comment, you know, in response to the public commenter, um, whose concerns, in many ways, I sh I share. I, um, you know, I, I do think that the, the way that we uh, make decisions about what our legislative priorities will be, how much time staff spend 
on taking particular positions and lobbying is um, is is relatively it's too loose, I guess I'll say. Um, and so you know, and so we don't we don't we don't micromanage those pieces of the you know, the, the step the lobbying process, putting together a legislative program, and I appreciate the effort of staff to try to put it in organized framework that um, can make legible in some ways what this is already doing. And um, I agree that council members should be more involved in those efforts. Um, we're all busy, and um, you know, and I know it's kind of it's a challenging, but I do think that uh, being more engaged. The particulars of those is important, and I recognize we can do it on our own, and um, maybe in on a smaller group. But um, I, I like that idea, <laughs> um, and I recognize that uh, there are constraints on time and resources for programs. So um, I, you know, I support it. I wish we could have a more robust uh, conversation around it, and really, you know, dive into what of a lot of this legislation, um, and fortunately, we can. Uh, but I will offer myself up, call a meet uh, any time, and I would participate in meetings with our elected officials. I do think it's our, you know, an important role for council involved way. Um, so while I, I, you know, I don't necessarily a lot of the legislation that's on this list. I'm not sure, you know, I mean, we're tracking it, and I'm not sure for the council. Would come down to kind of bring the legislation um, for a vote. Um, I, it does does provide a what what this is up. So um, I'll, I'll just leave it there. We'll report. We'll accept the report. And Councilmember Brown, you care to comment on any of. The um, specific um, items uh, you don't uh, agree with or um, have any additional direction for legislative items? Um, you know, it's that um, I, I probably not right, not right at like it would be more appropriate. I have a specific, I talked with Elizabeth offline okay. and navigate that. Um, but you know, it, the, the general uh, of the loss of local control that was raised mentioned the contact with a couple of different areas of uh, activity, um, mm -hmm. different sectors. You know, I have a about all the state is taking and usurping local authority, and so I have an interest in watching those. I also I'm just not sure what done the council about that at the moment and in terms of the particular bills i'll just check out the list but i appreciate the Thank uh, follow -up you. yeah and i encourage all of us to stay in close connection with elizabeth as she's helping craft a lot of bills and um, um i know several of us also have bills and and having our own uh, 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 conversations with um, some of the legislators or representatives. So I think it's important that they engage with with um, our concerns and any exciting ones that that might be helpful for for our city to be aware of our staff as well. Elizabeth, can you comment briefly on? Um, what it means to lobby? Sure. You know, I think that um, when I think about lobbying, I, I, you know, I think if we take the re most recent example, our focus has been on for, uh, bringing resources to the city to accomplish the goals that you all have set through uh, through your ordinances or through your your planning. The um, the re envisioned Santa Cruz is an example of a guiding document that. That really um, helped focus our efforts last year, and so um, it can take a number of, of uh, forms. One is the council writes a letter 
for the signature of the mayor to express a position. The other is that we are talking with staff on issues of interest to the council and following up on the impact of that issue on the city of uh, council position. Um, I will say, uh, Council Member Brown, that I, that our direction, and so I want to be clear that that is that is, and I I don't want there to be any about this is this is an extension of the council's priority. So I understand that you're not a, a monolith. You all have your own opinions about things. So that could that could be a a, a, a an element that we would have to negotiate through. But um, but I think it's important to say that our direct what I in this legislative platform was reflect back those things that I had heard, things that we had passed in in our own citywide legislation, um, and tracking those back how how they might. So um, that being, if you want to get involved with direct lobbying, please let me know. It, it's far more comfortable coming from you than it is coming from staff. Um, your voice is. Um, is very powerful as well. So I think that um, by all means, put us out of business. You know, get get involved and, and do the and do this work because you have powerful voice. Um, so um, I am welcome to that. I get to say thank you. I I appreciate that, and I I would tend to suggest that I feel like surfing our thanks. Thank you, Council Member Brown. <clears throat> uh, Council Member Cummings and then Council Member Myers. Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to ask the staff for um, purposes of transparency. Um, passing this, my understanding, would not, uh, you know, it's, it's accepting the report even today. And it doesn't necessarily bring items to the council. For example, if we want to write letters in support of any other state bill. Um, so just wanted to see if you could clarify on that. For example, I know that you know, AB 2930 with shifting from a 40 hour work to a 32 hour work might be something that you know, um, members of the public might want to have the council weigh in on and whether or not we want to send a letter of support. So just trying to want to get the clarity for the public um, council's ability to support other um, state or federal bills. Of course. You know, our advocacy is that you're correct. I really tried to if, I really tried to hone in on those things that I knew are priority based on surveys, based on the ordinances of work that you all doing. But it's not exclusive. It's not and and that there is often because new, new bills, while all the bills are out there, the, the boundaries of those bills are changing all the time as they go through committee. And so um, it's a very, very much a dynamic environment that we should engage throughout. And so I would just encourage members of the public, there are, it's, you know, assembly, state senate, federal bills that feel it's important weigh in on sure you're reaching out to us to let us know how we can help support the desires for those those pieces of legislation and so we can have conversations about um, whether the city should weigh in on certain things. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Myers. Um, it's a reformatting and a reconfiguring to make it clear my goal. 
I brought my t-shirt hat to the to the town and tried to make the platform a little. Um, it was two separate documents. Didn't the manual and the they go hand in I scrolled and so so I wanted to bring them both to a particular document. Um, but the the manual is an update policy. Well, I just, yeah, I just want to comment. I mean, I think that that's in the block. I think also so much of what a city has to do is really look right. Every dollar we offset. That have, which is the offset greater cost quite quite well, like the building rail trail sector. One of the things that we've done, we're obviously uh, funding. So I just, I guess I want to thank you. I read the document and I read somewhat me, but I also was like, wow, it's that awesome. I think also does, does reflect back. Let you know that um, worked for me. Uh, Great document. Find a to look at it. And I also And then also as a self policy. Um, policy. Having the tools and having that team really a lot of fun to get involved in the strategy. Haven't done it. Thank you guys again. Federally and well, I think guide. Thank you, Council Member Myers. And just doing a time check, we're at 4.15. And have another 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes item. And Council Member Contre Johnson or Vice Mayor Watts, if you wanted to comment before we take action. No, I think, Mayor, I'll just express my appreciation. And I do think that these relationships and communications and advocacy play a critical role for our cities. and. You know, as um, John and as uh, Councilmember Myers mentioned and Councilmember Brown mentioned, I think we all play a role. I know we met with Meta yesterday and just continue to really build these relationships. 
try to find resources to actualize a lot of goals. So yeah, thanks so much. Thank you. And I'll just reiterate what my colleagues have said. Thank you for all the work. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you, Elizabeth Smith. And uh, thank you for joining us today as well and for all your support. Um, I wonder if you might take a minute and um, briefly describe your role in all of this, how you fit in this process. Sure, thank you so very much, Mayor. Uh, you know, essentially, I am uh, uh, what I consider myself to be a city you know, federal advocate in, in Washington, D.C. I'm the city. I, I consider myself to be kind of an extension of staff and to kind of go back to the discussion we were having before. Um, while some people call me a lobbyist, I really do feel folks at the council are the best for the city. You know the city better than I do, although I love the city and know um, But you know it better and, and can really um, you know, advocate on the city and have done a marvelous job in my experience doing it. Uh, and I'll appreciate it. So, so what, what I do a lot of is, is uh, have contact with Elizabeth and other staff about opportunities in Washington, D.C. Uh, for instance, we've got this infrastructure bill that was approved in November of 2021, $2 trillion. Uh, and I might add, um, you know, we were used to the pandemic relief city got direct funding and got that $14 million to, to spend on related losses, assistance money, uh, some other things. Uh, the infrastructure bill was crafted by a bipartisan group of senators who, you know, sort of present the entire state. So uh, more than 60% of that bill is available through, uh, is available to states through block. The other part of that is available through, some of it is uh, through formula grants like, like transit agencies and others, but a lot of it is competitive. So as opposed to getting these allocations, the city's going to have to compete for a lot of funds. And I know that staff staff level A are ready to do that. Uh, and I uh, I hope that I can help to kind of you know present those opportunities to the city in a timely manner so that. Great, thank you. Appreciate all your work. Thanks, uh, okay, so thank you so much. And um, we have a motion on the table by Councilmember and a second by Councilmember Myers. Okay, we have a roll call. Councilmember Hunter. Hi. Coming? Hi. Hi. Mayor? Hi. Mayor what? Hi. Hi. That motion passes unanimously. And now with Council, Council Member Golder app. And now at this time, we will have a short break before we return at five o'clock for item number two on our agenda. Item number two will be the second public hearing with input from the community regarding the selection of a district map and election. Following that item, we'll be uh, input regarding uh, seven district maps and election. So we'll have an hour and a half on each of those items. Um, look forward to starting that discussion at 5 p.m. Hello, everybody. Welcome. And if members 
turn on your camera to go begin and resume our City clerk ready? Have we addressed any sound issues? Good audio. Okay. Well, welcome. This is the uh, next item on our agenda. Agenda item number two, the second public hearing to receive input from the community regarding the selection of a map election. election. Following this item, we will have item three, which is going to receive input regarding a seven. So this first item, I've allotted an hour and uh, for members of the public who are in this meeting, if this is an item you wish to comment on, now is the time to call in the exception. The order will be presentation of the item by the city's demographic consultant and staff, followed by questions from council. We will then take public comment and then return to council for deliberation and so at this time I would like to uh, welcome Mars and Doug Johnson. He is Mayor Bruner, we, you might also want to announce about the installation services. Great. And those that are speaking or will need Spanish translation, uh, to have that resource available. And so, um, let's see, who is here for that? That be? We have Peter Bichier. Peter Bichier, would you like to make that announcement in Spanish? Certainly, Mayor. Uh, buenas tardes. Eh, ahorita es la oportunidad. Vamos a hablar sobre las zonas digitales de la ciudad. Queremos compartir para que quieren a, a poder hablar al lo van a poder hacer en español ustedes cuando se darán la posibilidad de hablar le daremos el chance yo estaré todo gracias Mayor Bruner Mayor receive Spanish translation and we'll make sure. I might stop uh, along the way on any important point and make sure it is translated regardless. Anybody going? So let's begin and welcome Casey and welcome Doug. Doug, why don't you go ahead and start your presentation? Thank you. So, will do. Uh, it's good to be back with you. I'm going to share my screen. Uh, the first couple slides are going to look familiar as I kind of uh, touch on the big picture thing prior to uh, getting into the, the new map um, for this. So, I'll go through the first slides. I'll also cover these in the earlier hearing. But first of all, obviously, we're looking at changing the city council election. Whereas right now it's an at-large system where uh, council members are elected wide. Uh, the city is transitioning to a by-district system. For each candidate has to live in a given district. Only the voters in that district would vote on who represents them. There are a couple of districts in the state that still use something called from district. We have to be from a district to elect still citywide. But the California Voting Rights Act that is another version of at-large. So the only safe harbor for the California Voting Rights Act challenge is uh, the path taking which is to go to Biden. Uh, we are getting close to the end of an extensive city process uh, that started back in August with initial hearings to 
share information with the public and to get the word out about the process. Uh, we then had uh, the federal and state uh, release data that we used for the process. And then, as was just mentioned, we had the um, first hearing on the map back in March. And this is the second hearing uh, the various map off. As I just mentioned, uh, there will be a, I'll come back to this in more detail. Uh, the council has put an item on the ballot. This we will decide whether the six map or the seven district map on the, the upcoming November election. Uh, just on that, just to highlight that um, currently there are seven members in a rotating mayor. And so the um, one set of, of uh, one set of map keep that system with seven districts. And the other set of maps uh, change the system to have six districts, each electing one council member, and then a citywide election. So tonight, as the mayor mentioned, we are focusing on uh, the preferred six district map and the preferred seven district map. And then the debate on whether six is better than seven will take place as that uh, ballot. Not for uh, deciding between six and seven is not on the agenda. The rules that we have to uh, follow and that we can consider when drawing these maps um, are number one, federal law requires equal population, compliance with the Federal Voting Rights Act, and avoiding racial gerrymandering. The race is one factor that's considered, but it cannot be the predominant factor. Those are federal requirements. Then the state has a prioritized list of requirements as well. Uh, the districts must be contiguous, pretty practical. We have to avoid dividing neighborhoods of interest. We have to try to follow the identifiable boundaries. Try to keep the path. Find not bypassing one goal to get to more detail. State also bans um, adopting a map or drawing line in order to favor or discriminate against the political party. Those sets are requirements. We have to do all those other redistricting principles are more goals and supports of, that are, are acceptable, but they're not requirements. These are um, respecting the voters, trying to avoid head to head contests with current council members so that the reelection is left up to voters rather than the uh, lines dictating to the voters. And you can also, uh, we get a very small margin for that equal population. Environment. Can consider population one area. There's not a lot of those were our, our categories of statutory requirements and other In terms of the Voting Rights Act, to make sure we don't um, dilute the, vo the voting strength of any given protected class, and it's really looking at Latinos. Check the numbers for African American and for Asian American, and there's a little concentration, little geographic concentration of American at college housing, of course. Back. And then uh, there's a small concentration of African American and in the flat lower ocean. Really, it has the numbers really impact the demographics of an election. Are lit. as you can see in this map from the uh, lighter. Uh, concentration of lighter and a little more uh, census blocks down the flat area. That's really the area we get in order to avoid uh, any voting rights. Of course, when we're talking of interest, we get a much larger range of characteristic dynamic than just race. So, this is uh, one example showing renters. You can see there's a concentration in the red area, um, no surprise. Housing, and then also down in that flat lower ocean corridor, it's up to over seventy-five percent of households. Other parts of the city very different percentages. Um, those, are the and we do have um, available other demographic on. This was the one that really sort of uh, reflected or possible. Getting into the map, at the last screen, we showed you um, 
six district map be on the screen. Just to briefly touch on them, um, since we spent a lot of time talking about them last time. Uh, 601, as you can see, uh, yes, in, in area five, comes down and gets the west end of the city uh, to fill out that the population of that district. Um, district four gets the, the flat and then comes, uh, really gets the coast all the way over to the side of the and then we try to be compact neighborhood focused uh, with the rest of the district. They kind of fell into place um, as a result of how five or are drawn. Um, so two, very different approach. 601 only has two coasts. 602 actually has four districts come down and touch the ocean. So that gives a very different perspective. Also, 602 has districts covering use be divided five and six west. Um, and and the those two sets of difference, the four districts on the coast, two districts in UC, lead to the significant drawing on of, of uh, district four and or two and one are somewhat similar, although it does six oh three really combines pieces of the other um, very similar to 601, except um, does divide uh, yes, and that and you can see where uh, in five road um, because of that. The other districts are larger. So uh, we took it the back to the public and the council at the last spring, and came up with two new six district maps. Uh, you can see a big big topic was rather than San Lorenzo River as a boundary. Uh, there was a lot of well, essentially unanimous feedback uh, that hearing saying put flats with a uh, lower ocean corridor. And so both of these maps did that. There was also discussion of not wanting to um, have too much dis disparate mixing of UCSC population with especially the west side, done as the one. In this case, CSC is united in, in five in both maps. And then we get just enough of uh, population outside of UCSC to make a full district, but we keep it very close to UCSC, so it's neighborhood close to put in, not going all the way down. Um, differences between these two maps, District 4 um, comes farther north, it's all the way up to in 604B on the right, and it comes much farther. Uh, so it, instead of picking up the area around um, uh, Neary Lagoon, it stops the chestnut, comes all the way over to, and both, but then comes all the way up. This pushes District 2 to come up um, the side of Branson 40 all the way to the way. And one road across the top instead of stopping at the river like it does in the four, the four B, it then comes all the way across the pick up everything. Then, obviously, because four is shifted out, now we put the put around the lagoon, and in 604 B, it goes in. So, this gives you a little bit of an odd shape, an odd looking foot. Coming down to, um, into the lagoon neighborhood, but it look in there it really does make sense in terms of the neighborhood boundaries. While it is uh, a purely packed uh, neighborhood, which is a kept together. Then District Six came. So we end up with those those two goals of um, of o lower ocean corridor with uh, the flats. And um, minimizing the blending of, of UCSC or not. Um, both very different results. Both of them, I should note, also. So. The other piece that we can come back to as you uh, get into more maps, perhaps narrow the number of maps down, is the election thing. This is the decision on which district would be up in 2020 and which would be up. 2024. 
And so uh, both a proposed, in many cases, an alternate election sequencing has been posted on the district website, part of the PDF maps that are available up there. And we can come back to those. I'm happy to answer questions about it as well at any time. So that is a, a quick introduction to the uh, six district maps. I'm happy to answer any questions you have um, now or after uh, the public interview. I should note that we have that interactive map that we did last time that allows us now on the details of Great. Thank you so much. Uh, are, you, are you able to pull that interactive map up their screen if need be? Uh, yes, yes, I can. Okay. Thank you. So, um, I would like to bring it to members for questions. Uh, regarding this draft map. And uh, thank you, Doug, for showing the full map and as well as the new draft. All of these maps draft um, and for the public there. And uh, uh, Council Member Cummings, it looks like you and Councilmember Myers both have um, hands up for questions. So go ahead, Councilmember. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Thank you for that presentation. I'm just wondering if you can clarify the current sequence. I was looking for the agenda report, and pretty much all we really had was the um, description of the different maps, and um, and that's really what it focused on. So I'm wondering if you can speak to when you when we're supposed to make a decision on the sequence, um, what that is referring to. Sure. So uh, select a map and uh, make final adoption. So we'll also have to designate it will be up in which. Where there's only one council member in a district, falls out really easy. Just find whatever that stuff you select. But where there is, um, where there are Council members who are in different elections paired in the same, then the council has to decide. So that's the job. The other, of course, you have council members paired. Once that means you have a vacancy somewhere else, and so that vacancy could also could also be assigned either to 2020 or to 2024 based on what. So um, may not have um, obviously I didn't put it on the slide, but in the PDF. Uh, maps that are available, I can bring those up as well. There is a listing of which council members in which mm -hmm. seat, how that can play out. Okay, that's helpful. Yeah, because I was looking through the report, it seemed like that was um, very apparent. Thanks for pointing that out. Council member coming to that, that answer your question, do you see the um, options on the map? Okay, Council Member Myers. You're muted. I just have a question to make the first part of the shifts that you mentioned there was a regarding the options. I am an actual oh. just, a, just a discussion. And uh, so I just want to make sure so tonight is the night that we're going to collect. And then we're also by uh, 
there's both post election all up. Yes. Thank you. But Mars, do you have any to add on the election when or yeah, I, um, I just wanted to uh, say, as I read the report, uh, Council Member Cummings, I apologize to all of you for not highlighting that. Um, as Doug has said, the sequencing is, is part of the map, and um, you've highlighted that, so thank you. It might be beneficial when we uh, talk about sequencing um, of any map put up that it's uh, on this for everyone. <clears throat> and so um, if there are no further questions at this time, I will bring it out to public comment for input the uh, six district map in election. So if you are a member of the public and interested in comment, uh, raise your hand either by dialing star nine on your phone or by selecting hand on webinar on your and when it's your time to speak you will have three minutes I will go out to it looks like the first name is Garrett Phillips Uh, yes, thank you. Thank you. I'll just speak to both of them at once. Uh, I see the preferred maps and preferred district voting sequences have been essentially chosen. I mistakenly based my letter on what was written on the seven district map exhibit B indicating a preferred district sequence of four, five, and seven that would vote in November. But now I see actually in the ordinance you proposed, you chose four, six, seven, which I oppose, which in my opinion would result in excessive political yo-yoing every two years. How confusing uh, you need to fix that stuff. Uh, the seven district model is then a total loser for me. With choices uh, seemingly made, it makes the hearing probably moot, but I endorse the maps and election preferred sequence choices that voters will see as written for yes on measure E or the six district election choices, as well as just the map for seven districts. I suspect both are a step down in a sense of public governance to only vote for one person every four years. Therefore, as written, I strongly endorse the Measure E idea of six districts and an elected mayor. Again, I have some disappointment the public didn't decide on the mayor's term, and this will be a very difficult uh, thing to change now. The current tradition of nominating the mayor and vice mayor based on a one showing of most elected votes received and letting the people indicate a preference for mayors uh, and was better than a, a mayor chosen by maybe one vote of one council person making a majority, which I think uh, is part of the seven district plan. Uh, isn't that great? Uh, maybe that's a question. This at-large public guiding hand tradition of most votes received to become mayor will no longer be valid in a seven district plan, and it becomes purely a council decision. I don't really like that and wish the seven district model had a means of letting the will pick the mayor among all willing and winning, winning candidates and incumbent council members. Alas, uh, not to be if that one prevails. Currently, some members with two years remaining never get to the mayor again or ever, although they may have more experience than the top vote getter every two years and have gained more public respect. Although issues would arise that need to be thought through, somehow letting the public at least give advice or actually pick the mayor is badly missing from the seven district model. It could then be more competitive with the six district model as to public input on such an important office, which it isn't for now. The possibility of giving the public a choice for a two-year term mayor also seems not considered in the seven district model either. Again, I endorse the six district measure E as written, but it's unfortunate so many possibilities for improvement and actual public input into process by voting existed for both that were not explored despite the many so-called public hearings which hold limited sway. Thank you. Thank you for your input. Our next uh, hand raised 
member of the public is Nini. Ted, welcome. Okay. Um, I'm disappointed in the actions of the majority of this council and the way this has come to be. Um, I am <clears throat> disappointed, but not surprised that this proceeded so far in secret and closed session before the public was ever involved. Uh, ranked choice voting, which satisfies the requirements of the lawsuit was never taken into account. Um, you've already put it on the ballot and now you're taking public input which is um, use a construction term, ass backward. Um, and frankly, unconstitutional. Um, mayor at large gives the potential to have four four-year terms or a 16 term mayor. And because the mayor is, would be elected at large, that means that to be uh, disciplined or recalled would require a citywide recall as opposed to fellow council members taking the mayor to the woodshed and saying, shape up or we're going to vote you out of office. Um, I think the idea of having, um, there's two people on here that I wouldn't wish for four-year terms and the others, I'd be scared to death to have you as our mayor for 16 years. Um, again, uh, trying to slice and dice the work of this gentleman whose job is to draw district lines, uh, it's way too complicated at this shorter notice, looking at a map that is, uh, what, uh, 14 by eight on my computer screen. Had we had town meetings where these maps had been posted, um, you know, it's six foot by five foot size so that you could walk up to it and take a look and see where you lived and see where other people live um, and have the opportunity to then sit down as town hall meeting, uh, much like Andy Mills did when he came to town, uh, much like any other democracy would operate. Uh, this council has operated by, I, I don't even know what your principles are. I don't recognize them. Um, other than to say that your intent is to shove this down the throat of the people of this city. And uh, you can sit there with your smug look, but um, you will be remembered for this. You will, re you will be remembered. And I doubt if any one of you will be returned to office. Okay, thank you for your input. Our next member of the public has a phone number ending in five five two. Go ahead and unmute. Welcome. Press star six. Unmute yourself. No. Uh, yeah. Mayor, I'm on. Do I have three minutes, Madam Mayor? Yes. yes. Thank you. For today's special meeting, the council given the public about four and a half days' notice to read and digest for the city proposed to divide up the city into district voting for representation purposes. Don't you see how absurd this is? How can a thoughtful it up as well take a decent decision, second four four and a half days, as well as to even vote. Where was an open and transparent public process? This process sure feels like tech Florida. I can guarantee the city will attempt to say the June 2020 election with measure E gave voters the right and ability to determine what form of government city should function on measuring underhandedly changed the city charter. That's the city's constitution, the lock in disrespect, absepsis and disingenuous. The June 2022 election 
measure E gives no such ability for voters to truthfully and securely determine their future governance. Period. That's it. According to Ballotopia, no vote opposed to the measure E opposes amending the city charter to directly elect the mayor and elect the council thereby the charter unchanged. Wow. How is the council or able to change the city charter to just select the seven districts in the first place without the state constitutionally required vote of the because the council allowed the to say it could be done. The council accepted the attorney's advice without questioning the ethics or legality. This is not federal law enforcement. Given the current state of affairs, why didn't the council genuinely give voters an honest, honest choice to comply with the voting rights? If that were done, June 2022 ballots allowed voters to vote yes or no on different measures in order to accurately reflect how those governing are elected what function. For example, one measure would ask the voters want to select. A second measure would ask if there should be six or seven districts. A third measure would ask voters if they want a mayor elected at large, including what powers the directly elected mayor should have. A fourth measure that should be on this ballot would ask the voters if they want to implement ranked choice voting or some comparable system. Now that democracy looks like. Certainly not the acceptable people way the council has rigged measure The system isn't broken. Work the Thank you. The, the advisor has has rang. Your time is up. Thank you, Peter. Have a good evening. Uh, our next member of the public has a phone number ending in one seven zero five. Hi there. Go ahead and press star state yourself. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, welcome. Hello. Oh, great. Thank you. Um, I was intending to say that I support Map 602, and um, I really oppose Map 601 and 603. I think the district, there's one district in those two other maps that is ridiculous that um, goes all the way to. Seventh Avenue that clearly violates the keeping communities of interest together. But I, I when I heard um, the not prior caller one before, I just wanted to let council staff know that I think he was entirely you and you don't deserve it. He was also wrong. I was in a um, a forum that was a public forum that about issue and there were two staff members the city attorney bronson and um one of the city manager's office and separating this crew and there was only one other person one other member of the public so that that caller was totally off base when he said there was no public participation um and also they let us know that there were full-size very large maps that were available for viewing. So I just want to say, um, you know, I, I actually got large that we have now is best, but um, I know you guys have uh, there a lot of interest in you definitely, even if you disagree with that, what you said was completely off base and neither elected nor staff served those kind of people. So um, thank you very much. Once again, I just going to say I love the map and this election, I support. Thank you. That's all. Your input. Our next member of the Vivian Barton. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hello. Hello. Um, thank you, um, Councilman, uh, for this opportunity. Um, first, I would like to explain that I've lived 
the city of Santa Cruz for over 25 years. And uh, originally from Los Angeles, I was born in East LA, raised in South Central, neighborhoods out there. And I'm a recent scholar from UCLA <clears throat> and a retired educator. Um, so looking at these maps, I felt need, I needed to inform myself some more about the numbers, I crunching the numbers. And a serendipity us about the abridgment, voting rights, and racially polarized voting in the city of Santa Cruz. Uh, this is put together by the California Voting Rights Project. It was published February 2020. And I believe this is why the city council members decided to uh, go with this. Um, one thing that I did that report, a look at this map and uh, analyze was that it said on page 24 that uh, there was some possibility of making a majority majority voting district in the city of Santa Cruz. Looking at census tracts 104 and census tracts 108 and 1010. And when I took the census tracts and compared them to maps that were on the website, um, it seemed that um, census tract the one most close, uh, sorry, 1004 was stated in the report, most closely identified with. CSC and the census tract um, 1008 and then most coincided with the beach flats area and then so south 101. Sorry, south uh, highway. When I looked at the maps and the maps that I felt like closest were the uh, 604B and the 101C. So yeah, so those are the ones that I would propose based on what I read in this report. Um, but I did speak uh, last time uh, in March. I did also uh, raise the question that is this regard, even with this input, but you know, the whole point, of, or not the whole point, but my understanding is in why all of this discussion started about this big map and uh, was because of uh, that lawsuit and a proposed law, and this was the reason for it. Right, but I, what I just wanted to say is that I think the city needs to go beyond voting district maps as far as the Latino community is concerned, because there are systematic reasons that were said in this report called racially. Thank you. Thank you for your input. The next caller has a phone number ending in 495. Go ahead and press star six and mute yourself. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Hello? Hi. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, yeah, my name is Candace uh, Brown, and I live on East Morrissey neighborhood. Um, and frankly, I haven't followed these maps because it keeps shifting, not only whether it's going to be district election or seven districts, now it's six districts and a mayor. Now we're proposing a variety of different maps. And it seems very strange to have something of so much impact inside in this particular one city council as a special city, the regular city council. Many people don't even expect you know, a meeting. Um, and I'm just wondering how much publicity was provided to ensure that everybody in the city was aware of it. Um, and so, for that reason, I know with transportation, with the active transportation plan, um, there was a lot of different issues and complexity. And because of that, they voted after a lot of discussion, realizing there was common ground, to have two more community meetings. And so I would highly suggest that just, there's not any consensus of people that are, are calling in or in the letters, but people that I'm talking to in the community. So I think there is need for further discussion. There is need for two community meetings. 
and there is a need for a lot more to get people more involved. I just came off uh, I've been put out for over a month, and so um, I've just now beginning to set my show back into this and just finding, well, wow, there's a lot here to still be thought about. And so I don't think you're ready to make a decision. And if you do so, I wonder why you're doing it. If you're doing it because somebody on the council wants to run as mayor, then I think that person should recuse themselves, but they should come forward and say, you know, I'm doing this because I want to pay your job, and I'm there for voting for that. That's a conflict of interest, and it should not be allowed. And so, therefore, I think people should step back, have more community meetings, make sure that people are more transparent about the intention of different changes, and therefore, so. So, thank you for your time. And um, thank you, thank you again for all the and thank you. Thank you for your input. Any members of the public that would like to comment on this district draft map and give input on this draft map? We have one uh, member of the public. Yeah, go ahead and unmute. Hi, this is the second one a lot of first here. These are enormously complicated decisions. Like I'm looking at the website, you don't even have a map on the, um, you know, the interactive map. Like you can't even look at those, how they are. Like, you're giving me a really weird look, Casey, but they're not on there. So, um. We're supposed to look at 11 maps and figure out what is the best go between the six, seven ones. All I can think is, what are each of you getting out of this by voting for whichever map that you want? And how does that help us in a long situation for our city? I really, I really hope that you look at this from a much longer term versus like, oh, well, I can run or, um, you know, because a lot of you are neighbors on the Lower West Side, and, like, that into this as well. Um, there should be more community input. This being, it started at, say, I know, I throwing that. I'm just glad that I'm, uh, uh, I know, I hear about sort of things because I'm involved uh, with, community involvement and a lot of hurt. They have jobs and they have kids. They have things that they need to do. So don't make a decision today. Let the group decide more and not just um going with a, whatever you think or that's gonna be the best for politics. That's just really not fair to those of us that here and raise our families here and want to have fair votes. Um, also, put those other maps on the interactive map. I don't understand how you add more maps if you don't add them to the interactive. It's just very confusing looking at the website to even see what you guys are doing. Um, so just take a step back and think about long-term needs and not your own political ambition. Thank you for your input. Uh, input. The, is there are any other members of the public who would like to on agenda item number two? Matt. We welcome any other uh, comment, and I do see a hand up. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah. Hello. Um, so uh yes. Yeah. It feels a little futile because um I guess this isn't maybe the place for this, but it almost feels like we have like a little tech board and uh you give us our time to to put our notes up on the board 
but there's not even really any um, accountability as to whether you're even listening to this session. I mean, Martine Watkins is coming out to an album right now. I wouldn't know. I mean, seriously, it doesn't, like, there's no back and forth. Like, so basically, I, I wanted to uh, ask, you know, like, because, like, ask the entire council. Um, but uh, maybe, yeah, maybe Martine Watkins, I just wanted to know if, in your opinion, you thought the majority of Santa Cousins know about this, like know this is happening, uh, or have some sort of idea or could it view what is happening? Um, and if not, is that a problem? And I didn't mean that hearing like, oh, you know, we've done X and Y and we've uh, done our due diligence in this way, but just like in your opinion, do you think 50% of Santa Cruz's population uh, knows this is happening and uh if not that is that a problem um i i would i would suggest and i guess i have a three minute block but yeah um again this is my uh this is my little note card uh that i've stuck backboard so i guess i'm just talking to myself and hope you guys walk past to read it uh and yeah that, that that's it for for all of us probably less than 40 people actually listening to this zoom call thanks for uh Thanks for formatting it. This really feels like a democratic process. Uh, that's it. Here, I'm not jamming out, but I'm not. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you for your input. Uh, let's see, are there any other members of the public? I see Garrett Stevens, you already spoke. Um, okay, so if that it, then I will bring it back to council, and I want to start, um, there were some questions concerns raised, public comment, and first I would like to say that um, the way our, our uh, meetings are structured, it is a very formal public comment. Not dialogue. It's not the public comment, uh, and so I know some folks will um, constrained not have dialogue, but we do take your input, you listen, and um, thank you, and we appreciate your input. We also appreciate our email which we get as well as well as phone call but we get as well as well as but from various community members even just being out and about grocery store for example uh, so um, thank you for everybody but it really does you know get taken into um, our discussion and um, Serious. So, um, with that, I had a couple questions I just wanted to address from public input. Um, had a couple of folks that were concerned uh, about the public access to actual in maps or community meetings, calls that were, um, and I'm wondering if um, Doug and Casey. To the outreach that um, has happened process. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, Brennan, thank you. I'd love to speak to that. I, uh, this process has been on since February 2020. I've only been involved since November, but when I came on board, there was already a website as well as um, video postings of the prior forums. Uh, the city is legally required to have a number of and um, we have had those, and videos of those that have been held are available on our website. Um, we have also probably met with close to two dozen organizations or groups or had other meetings. Um, some of those meetings have been with leadership or representatives of organizations that don't necessarily have access to the internet, wanting to make sure they are, they're providing maps and resources just reaching out to make sure that, that they have everything that they need. Um, at the last meeting after the 
somebody asked about the maps. Um, we mentioned that the very the, the blown up maps on hard stock are actually available in the lobby here at City Hall, um, and those are still there. Um, I've also we've also got maps available, hard copies maps here and at various locations around the community, um, and those are all those locations are listed on the website, and um, and and so we've we've had a lot of outreach. I'm very We've also had uh, translation services available on the virtual meeting. And I would just say that uh, part of what the city has done is actually gone beyond formal input process, actually putting mapping tools out to residents. So uh, there ha the residents month had the ability both online tool and a for those that is draw and and Mayor Bruner, I would also be happy to show folks how to access the interactive tool that NDC provided to us that has all the maps, including the UCSC map, student history. So we, that all those maps are there, and I'd be happy if you'd like to show everybody how to access it. Uh, thank you. Because that was another question about new maps on the website. Uh, so uh, are you suggesting? Could do that right now. I sure could. Oh. It works. So um, you can see uh, this is. Let me go first to. Um, excuse me. You all are in my way. Let's see. So here's the city's transition to district elections website, and underneath the maps that we have all here, we have the interact map. And you'll see at the right, can you all see this? Yes. All the various options maps in the interaction. And this has been up, all those maps have been up for a week. It, um, well, they've been up longer, the new map. Of Right, the new maps are, are required to be posted for at least seven days before the meeting. So they, the, the new maps are available on the city's website. Thank you. I did see the, uh, uh, I went and also looked at the large map at the, the lobby hall. Um, thank you for having those other loops. Um, the other question and concern that was brought up in public comment was um, um, about uh, the, the city charter being and um, us going. Uh, there's um, the question of district is on the ballot. Um, the voters decide on whether um, vote districts in an at-large mayor, which is going on the ballot prior a charter amendment. Uh, and so that doesn't pass. The process we won with seven doesn't require a charter amendment. And so seven council members. And so, is, is there anything more you do? You know, this agenda item is really to approve um, a map. So we have our map for when the uh, ballot after the election in June. Um, we will know on the path of six or seven districts. We'll have our map ready. Um, so, so that anyone running and for council member um, understand where their district was. So it's important to have map ready. And that's why we're voting on a district map as well as seven. Is that correct? I'll chime in here. Hi, it's Cassie Bronson, City Attorney's Office. Yes, that's correct. Um, I would just add specifically address the comment comment. Um, they were correct that if the uh, if 
the measure doesn't pass, then the charter would remain unchanged. That's correct. However, we believe that the council is most likely to pass the ordinance according to collections, which is allowed for you know, the government code section 3486. And there are a number of that suggest um, the applicability of the VRA to choose Thank you, Cassie Braun, City Planning Office. Um, so hopefully that 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 helps for one of the questions that brought up public comment. And then um, um, there was a caller who was concerned um, that the meeting started at eight thirty, and we did start nap at five. Um, was the legislative process. Um, and also, uh, this is not the first, second hearing. Um, so I just say that five o'clock, I, I, you know, I can make it at a time where we get attendance folks after work. And so um, that was time. Um, is there a timeline for us to um, approve these maps? Um, Doug, um, you may want to weigh in. Um, I believe the latest that we can approve these is the 180 days before the November election. The the 180 is for district the redistrict. Got it. We yeah. have, I think I think it's July 7th. Certain number of days before the election, I think it happens to fall on something. Yeah, we end up with essentially like one day, give or take, and the election, June election, by um, the deadline. But that, but um, we do need to the map that will go on that ballot, Barnett. In, in for November's ballot, you're talking about? Exactly. And then the further in advance that this, the further candidates might be on notice. Correct. Um, so is there is there a way to confirm if it's beginning of July is when the absolute deadline to approve that? I see Cassie popping up. Yes. I believe the date we were looking at was July 6th. However, um, you know, we really want to get this done well that um, because, first of all, we're passing an ordinance that requires things, right? So we need a second reading. Thankfully, we do have a provision in our charter that provides that um, the ordinance will be effective. At least we don't need an additional good. Um, but um, I think there's potentially a little bit more time, but really I think the best to firm up the map as possible. Uh, and get those maps to the county elections officials and that candidate be on notice for um, potentially running and representing our one, one thing here I would add that not a legal requirement, but a policy requirement is um, this state's been great about separating hearing. One of the things we can experience once debate about seven really gets then details of the Seven district have to get ignored, so it makes sense to spend the time now, as you have been, look at the details of the two options before we really get into the debate. Vote on which approach, like when the two questions get merged, it tends to really um, uh, distract from picking the best. Yeah, that makes sense, and. Um... I just wanted to understand that timeline. Um, you know, the several callers concerned with opportunities for um, the public to have awareness. And so, thank you. Um, I will bring it out to council uh, uh, if we can start with anyone moving the recommendation that. Sent in, then we can go to discussion. 
sorry, Mary, I wasn't going to move that recommendation, the different recommendation, and I did have some follow up. Okay. So go ahead. Council Member Kellen Party Jump. Okay. Um, I, I'm going to ask my follow up questions. Okay. Um, first of all, thank you for the work that, that has been done. And the, as you said, the years of work that's gone into it. I just wanted to hear um, a little bit more about the timeline. Um, got a little lost at 180 days from the November election, but but seems like there is a little more urgency for us selecting that now, not by July 7th. So if you could just on that. Sure. Um, and, and again, Doug and Cassie, you're probably, Doug and they're probably more of an expert, is, is far, by far more of an expert, but the drop dead deadline by which we get the maps to the county is the, is the beginning of July, and I think Cassie clarified it's July 6th. Um, but that's just legal requirement, and um, there's an urgency to getting this resolved because folks do need to know where they're living and what the potential uh, may be for them running for election um, in a district. Mm -hmm. And um, as Doug pointed out, once people start focusing on the ballot in June, the, the, the noise around that is going to consume everything. So if we can get this done earlier uh, rather than later, that would be more ideal. Great. And then um, there was a survey that was completed on MAP. Can you speak to that a little bit? Sure. We did the poll post survey. Um, it's a, a tool that we use, and it's been on the website for uh, – a number of months, and so a couple of months actually, since we first posted the initial drafts that uh, NDC provided us in January, and we collected feedback on the first round of maps, and we received a lot of feedback there. When, when we first thought we were looking at a seven district process, we received I think around 120 responses to that, and around uh, 56 responses to six district maps, which came out later on in the process. We put out a survey with the maps this week. We did not receive a ton of feedback, but we did share. I think I understand that folks shared, received uh, with the council um, in the mailbox and the council mail around the, the agenda items. And uh, so, so we, we we did promote those uh, the availability of those through our social media channels and things like that. Uh, but uh, probably with the seven day legal requirement, probably just wasn't as much. We also did let um, some of the communities that we met with, um, I let them know about the poll and maps and its public hearing to make sure that they uh, had a, an opportunity to share that with the constituents. Okay, great. And you said, I put in my notes, two, over two dozen uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Okay. And it's been over, you know, prim primarily since January. Uh, once the maps were available, reaching out to folks and making sure they're aware of the process and how it works and, and asking for their feedback on how best to reach their customers who may not have access to virtual things. Okay, and, and then the last question, and then um, Mayor, I did have comments question to make, but the last question is, um, were some of those um, Latinx or B flat work with? Absolutely. That was uh, a huge part of my focus. Reaching Great. out to uh, yes, that community. Great. Okay. Thank you. Um, so I'll, I'll my comments brief. Um, thank you to everyone who has participated in all of these different various forms and um, avenues that, that staff and geographers have put before us, and then those who've called and written letters. Um, you know, I think one caller said this isn't about seven council members, and they're absolutely right. Um, this is. You know, whether we do districts or not, that sort of moved on from there. I know that we'll have very strong feelings about it, but we are about how shape um, our our governance for the last for the next decade. Um, so it's not about me. It's not about my six colleagues. We'll turn out. Um, maybe we'll run again. Who knows? Really about the next 
many decades. So I'm glad that Fuller said that. Um, you know, I think this is difficult. This is the first time that we're doing this as a community. Um, all of the maps have trade-offs and impact. And um, I just, I don't think delaying any longer will get us closer to making the perfect decision, choosing um, the perfect map, because I don't think a perfect map exists. Um, and so just based on, you know, feedback from before, the surveys, looking at the data, looking at the stats, I would like to recommend that we move forward with that. So do I appreciate the work that the staff has done in integrating our uh, feedback into 604 and 604 b uh, But I still think that 602 has the most balanced approach to our community's interest is right intact. So I'd like to move <laughs> forward with Mm -hmm. Hi. You okay, Mayor? <laughs> All right. Uh, there's a motion uh, from Council Member Tonsley Johnson to um, uh, approve Map 602 for the Sixth District Map. Is there a second? And a second by Council Member Myers. And do we, do I need to um, speak to the sequencing right now? The sequencing that's proposed on 602, I think. We, um, does it need to be one or two motions? Can someone speak to that? Be two separate motions, or or either way. I'll make it part of the same motion then. That the sequencing that's proposed on the draft. Can you pull up map two? That. Okay. Cool. So now we can have discussion about. Um, Two, we have the proposed. Um, oh, there is no alternative. There's only one option on this map. Some of the maps have a couple of options. Um, so it looks like this map has. Can you, Doug? Yes. Uh, thank you, Mayor. So in this case, there is a, a pairing. There are current council members in this, but both the council members are on the same election. So it's similar effect of one that that just goes their election like okay. uh, and then the one vacant. Oh no, the vacant. So uh, so that that's why there's one. So um, motion is is recommending map six hundred two that um, if the voters decide to uh, go to a six district. Um, with a one at large mayor, then this would be the map used. And in November of 2022, District 4 and District 6 would be available for someone to run plus at large mayor. And then in 2024, District 1, 2, 3, and 5 available for someone to Okay, just wanted to make sure that was clear. Um, <clears throat> so, um, Member Myers? Seconder, I just want to thank um, staff um, and uh, also knowledge I'm hearing a lot of uh, also some of the um, it is important for 
don't think any city council. Um, they ran for office, had ideas. Um, really, two not dozens of cities I are. Um, so this is important to understand. That I don't know. This is something that Jick gained polls. Um, we are trying to respond back gain cost fight also. is going to be a very as you're an open so Doug I just for her kid and I did look at also some hours with all the data on the back side of the I don't a lot of them, a lot of question for those folks who really are want to understand really what happened on with our statistics on the back. So I think we are where we are. I am to part at six or before I look at it. The look at well things are just pop out so on six two which is it it really establishes sir plus also when I think about that make district thinking about things like this is just large of small our own services. Districts have safe about like all the kinds of about your see. Things about are the those kinds of that how safe type network that was very helpful. I would try to that way when I look so that state food is compact. So that's well. It is the divide of people town. Well, both. Or 
like whatever it is, in some ways, uh, a little bit envious, you know, having a place that's some that is full focus, but same lose that that ability. This pain makes a more so nearly in to very difficult. So that's comments on supporting. You. Um, and just a quick time check, we have about another 15 minutes on this item, um, and I will just like go to Council Member Cunning and Council Member Brown. Mayor, I had a couple <clears throat> comments that I wanted to make first. Um, one, I just want to be clear for members of the public that while the discussion around district elections has been going on for quite some time and there's community meetings on district elections um, going back a couple of years now, that it wasn't until February of 2022 that we started with six districts and there had not been uh, as extensive outreach on this question of moving toward a uh, sixth district and a directly elected mayor. Council actually um, voted unanimously to move forward with just district elections until a subcommittee was formed in November, um, at which point the subcommittee then brought back the notion of moving forward six district directly like the mayor. And what I've been hearing from the public and what I've uh, known to be true is that there was not a process around um, the outcome. So I just wanted to make sure that's clear for the public. Um, and while, you know, we might vary in whether we support six districts or seven, um, you know, what's before us are the map. And part of why we uh, sent staff to bring us back is because of the fact that um, there were concerns that were raised around the maps that were first produced, um, especially relating to uh, full uh, low income areas or Latino being kept in um, same districts, also having um, broad representation. Um, map 604, what staff brought back, and while I'm not in favor of the district, I thought did a really good job of trying to address the concerns that were raised at the last city council meeting. When we look at the areas where there are higher concentrations in the community, we know that those areas have flat, we know that those areas are lower ocean. And what 604 did was actually combine um, areas which was expressed by council, something one. Um, it also did a good job of keeping the lower west side back. Um, it has um, district, I mean, the, the third district, but, um, you know, I think that it does a good job of representing and together the upper west side. And, you know, what it also did was heard council members concerns students is students really being able to have a on the, City Council and having an opportunity to get elected, which uh, District 5 actually accomplishes by having campus um, and also other a Asians as a, a interest to be able to have a district where they're kept together. So, oh, and then it also, again, addressed around the east side and Seabright air area in fact. And um, so I think that, you know, based on the fact that we sent staff back um, with a lot of these concerns, they rest bringing forward map. So um, I'm inclined, and also because of the mayor's rules around um, making staff recommendations and providing an opportunity to make a motion on the staff recommendation to make a substitute motion that we adopt map 604B. And um, I did have a question on this as well, because 
the other piece of this is that we've done a lot of had a lot of discussion about map haven't had really any discussion and there hasn't been much um, presentation on the election so um, I have a question regarding the election before we start that motion um, on map 604 B um, you know it has two sequences and I'm wondering if staff can take a minute to explain how those sequences is would work and how it relates to over potential for over representation if there's two council members in a district at the time if another district doesn't have a representative how do we reconcile that sure happy to do it just questions um there are 604b there are um uh, scenarios are proposed in an alternate um because there are uh, council members, uh, three council members shared in District 6, two council members shared in District 1, so that creates vacancy. So, really, the two options are just trying to get the options for how those uh, assigned. Um, a couple of tricks come into this. One is 20, if a council member whose term is up in 2023, it's assigned to a district that doesn't come up till 2024. That means this current year will be their last office before they have to sit out. Before they um, on the flip side, 2024 members assigned to 2020, they can run midterm. Um, and if they in the district, then they resign their last year at large. Um, that's how it plays out for council members. Um, for the vacancy, yes, there is the. This is happens in many many transitions, like where there is a vacancy. Um, interestingly, the council members' current terms go until twenty twenty four. Remain at large council member until twenty twenty four. So while there may not be a council member in that, they continue to be represented by the at large twenty twenty four member. So should any of the 2024 council members resign now in 2024. It would actually be an at large vacancy, even if, even if it's 20. So, yes, there would not be a council member in that, but they would by those. That is extremely helpful. So, I want to thank you for explaining that because I was not sure how that would work. But I think that having that clarification that um, the council members would remain at large. Election 2020. Um, and with that, then I would um, I would support um, also adding to that motion to go with alternative elect sequence um, for map. Second that. Okay, we have a substitute motion made by council member Cummings. And a second by council member Brown. Uh, map 604B with the alternative election. And so we'll do a uh, roll call vote motion. No, and I can share why later. No. No. Uh, so the substitute motion does not pass five, five against. 
for. So now we are back to the motion on the floor and back to discussion. Council Member Brown. Well, I was going to make a case for the previous motion, um, self bit of map and so forth. Um, it's a little superfluous at this point. Um, I do have some comments on, in general, on the process, but I guess I'll just save those for next agenda item. They're relevant. Um, you have another comment, Council Member Cumming? Yeah, I'll just say that you know, having lived in Platte area for multiple years and in the Hill area, that breaking up that area from the lower ocean corridor, also including it with some more wealthy affluent areas um, that are very distinct in that neighborhood, especially if the idea is that you want to have more liquid representation, is likely going to result in less representation. And I would say that if you are very interested in having more representation on city council, then I think the city, um, that our community to have a discussion around council compensation, um, especially as it relates to the mayor, if you want to have someone sit in a seat for four years um, and we want to see diversity on our council and in that mayor. Because as it stands right now, part of what prohibits people from running is the fact that a lot of hours put in very difficult for low income and working class people to run for office. Um, so so um, I won't be supporting this because I don't think that it actually results in supporting more you know, people get elected. Um, and I also think that um, we're further uh, diluting the vote of working class and lower class people, and it will result less. Council Member Brown, looks like you. Um... Yeah, <laughs> sorry. I um, I for a second I lost track. Of the We're just voting on whether to accept the substitute. So we are still on the substantive matter of the different map. I um, I just want to echo Council Member Cummings' comments. Um, you know, really highlight questions about low income uh, representation and kind of working class people in our city and how it is that they and participate um, the political process serving uh, elected office almost possible to I mean I <laughs> I've been trying to do it um, I've I've done it I've been very lucky to do it um, as a renter who was placed you know um, and now you know, have the good fortune to have a network here that's allowed me to have stable housing um, so that's just a big question. And um, so then further, kind of what I see throughout the country is that as invested really in attempting to put other, you know, other ideas of risk together are really giving, um, you know, are, are, are not taking that perspective to the flat lower ocean. Now, you know, the, the like the beach flats with you know the upper west side um the inner you know the, the near upper west side not um no, i just i just don't know how to rationally wrap my mind around that to have the opportunity to have a district that actually um has the potential of a representative represents actually down to area lower ocean um they have their own kind of small commercial uh, network in that area in the river flat that's getting cut right as, as a district I don't know that it really matters but um, council member Myers brought up about other app and so I guess I you know we split hairs about um, where how to divide this up it's always uh, you know, upsides and downsides effective but I I feel strongly that 
using 602, which I have to say, I've heard I've heard one, uh, one commenter say they support. So it, the West Siders are calling in and they wanted to for West Side Impact. Um, people on the East Side wanted to be right impact. Um, some of us spoke up about for uh, or higher for a Latino uh, candidate, Latinx candidate to be elected a district that was shaped more like this or now. Um, so I am disappointed as well. Uh, won't that option. I I hope the voters uh, spend some time with that map before they make their. Council member Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, I just wanted to um, comment briefly on where my thinking was. I think the 604 attempts at some of the comments that were made at the last hearing, but some of my concerns are that it does split up side in particular around the business corridors. Um, so it splits it right in half. Um, it further separates university from neighborhood. And that's already a challenge where we have city on the hill, um, kind of up there, um, silos. I think it further separates um, the university and it decreases the number of coastal districts. I think it's important that we have multiple districts that touch the coast. Um, th there were comments and um, in the surveys that were done, um, just to Council Member Brown's point that was brought up, there were, I think, 602 had some of the highest of uh, approved maps in the in the last survey that we did, and um, I just want to point to one of the earlier slides that Doug showed us around the principles of how we need decisions, and that um, sort of being around one race ethnicity is something that's illegal. So I think that's an important. Um, so those are some of my thoughts around why I think ultimately 602 has a more balanced approach of thinking about all the services and needs across our country. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Holder or Vice Chair Watt, did you have any um, further discussion before we go to vote on this motion? I think I'll okay. go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. I, I don't have any. Well, I mean, I just wanted to, um, you know, speak. I need to, I don't want to gas bag. No, I don't. Okay. okay. We, um, we have a motion on map two um, <clears throat> by Count R.A. Johnson. Seconded by Councilmember Myers. May we have a roll call? Aye. Aye. No. No. Aye. Aye. That motion passes with five in favor and two again. Okay. Um, so that is the map that we have selected. Um, thank you for all the and community input on that map. So two with um, election listed on that map. Um, we are now ready to proceed to our next agenda item. Um, agenda item three. And I am going to call a three minute recess. So we'll be back three minutes. So next up is agenda item number three, 
This is the second public hearing to receive input from the community regarding the selection of a seven district map and election. For members of the public who are streaming this meeting, as this is an item you wish to comment on, now is the time to call in using the instructions on your screen. The order will be a presentation of the item by the city's demographic consultant, followed by questions from council. We will then take public comment and return to council for deliberation and action. And I would like to hand it over to Doug Johnson, demographer. Welcome back. Again. Again. So, um, just a reminder, these are handy, but I won't go through the rules again, but they are the same seven districts. I'll need to go over the seven district maps that were covered in the last uh, map 101 uh, is a set of highly compact maps really follow major roads just about everywhere uh, they're bound. Um, and there are uh, four such a uh, uh, post there. Map 1 is more of a horizontal alignment of the district. So we only get coastal district five. Um, and both of these maps have yes entirely in one district. Um, map 1 follows a combination of major roads and uh, as well. And then map 1 uh, is a very different northwest because it does have the uh, yes in district. Um, so it is divided to have a voice. Uh, the initial feedback was uh, Unite Right, Right Neighborhood. Uh, uh, as we've been discussing, right, but flat lower road corridor together. And then there was a comment that uh, 102 would be good for the uh, west side, alignment of, of five and six. So uh, we do have uh, two maps to show you. And each one of these maps um, takes an additional step. So as you'll see, we started from map 101. Oh, I almost forgot. We also, as so it was mentioned earlier, we public map submission uh, as well from uh, the new map 701. Uh, looking at the new map, I'll walk kind of step by step. Uh, 101 just has relatively small change, uh, primarily putting the lower ocean corridor in four, and then that triggers a little rotation. Uh, or four push uh, uh, over to Ocean View. And then two needs to pick a population. It actually comes in on the north side of or and picks up that northern area. Um, and then there's a little bit of rotation uh, five as well. Really small change in the population. 101B is small to 101. 101C goes a uh, significantly larger step. Uh, four pushes all the way over to Grand Forty Avenue, going over to Ocean. Uh, Chester becomes the west. Now, I'm sorry, the of uh, oh, no, direction. The Grand Forty and Ocean become the east boundary. Chester becomes the west boundary. Four. Um, picking up that territory into four means it goes north way, and so District One. Then comes all the way over to the uh, to the river, Prince River, and and uh, District Three then comes south of Mission Four, pick a population down to Laurel and Lincoln, and a uh, results in five is also south of Mission. Um, there is a slight shift in six for population, but kind of another step. Of, of change away from the original 101. Then 101 builds on 101C, so it has most of those changes. But then over on the west side, it approaches five and six, much more like 
um, the, what they talked about on the west side, like last Coast Road, Coast Five, I think. Um, trick that happens in this map to make the population numbers work is because four has shifted. And five and six are now rotated over in the west side. Uh, comes down and picks up the water plant, the lagoon uh, reserve, and the neighborhood north of uh, to balance it out. That area ended up uh, four and five. So this really is a progression of is small change is large the large trying to pick up as possible from the direction. So again, we have the interactive maps look in more detail, uh, but with that, I will uh, stop the question. Thank you, Doug. Council member questions on the seven district map election. Okay. Um, I will then go out to public comment at this time. For members of the public for streaming this meeting, if this is an item you'd like to comment on, you can raise your hand either by dialing star nine on your phone or select raise hand in the webinar controls on your computer. And it's your turn to speak. You'll hear an announcement that's been unmuted and the timer will be set three minutes. This is for public comment on the seven district map and election. So I will go to the first member of the public, Reggie Meister. Hi there. Hi. Um, so I missed the first uh, one of these map um, discussions, so I'm sure this was probably already covered, but I am just like bewildered at the notion that you can be sued for having a racially polarized election system. But then at the same time, your districts can't be based on race. So how are we accountable to the reason that we were sued in the first place, right? So it almost feels like we're in a situation where we could make it even worse, but because of some bureaucratic definition that district elections are good, that now there's a, like, I investigate, because back in Santa Barbara, uh, what kicked off is uh, somebody just asked an expert to look at the data and they didn't release it to the public and they just said the data says that it's really polarized. And then someone asked another expert and they again didn't let the public see the data and they said it's racially polarized. And that was good enough for them apparently. <laughs> and they just, that created this precedent. So I'm wondering like, can I just go hire an expert, determine after one, or a couple rounds of elections say that this is racially polarized and sue the city and make it change its election system because that's what I think would be fair. <laughs> and I'm just curious what the city attorney has to say about that. Because otherwise, I mean, doesn't this just seem stupid? I mean, like, just silly. Um. Okay, I, it got muted. Okay, there we go. Next caller is has put on the seven district map, which map and what we'd love to hear from you. Vivian Bart. Hello, um, I'd like to say that uh, the maps as I presented this time are 101C or 101B. The ones that 
align with the census tracts that would provide the most uh, percentage Latino voters in the in those districts. Um, also, uh, you know, in the last vote, I was a bit hurt as first I hear, oh, Latino representation. That was there outreach done for? I mean, not for outreach for these meetings, and then the next, that same person proposed a map where so one two would have given us the Latino vote ninety percent. Now the one that has been um, voted by the council members has now reduces percentage of Latino voters in that uh, number four to thirteen six percent drop in the amount of registered Latino voters, and that is to preserve Seabright and the businesses. Well, you know, best friends of and so I live in Seabright. Best friends of Forty and Sacal. I really don't. The restaurante and the gas stations and ocean, you know, really do belong part of it. So it seems to lose a shock at this point. That said, um, they also want to feel that, like you, this person said, they don't see how creating districts that reduce the amount of Latinos in an air in a district voting registration number is going to solve the report, yeah, the issues brought up in the report about the abridgment of Latino voting rights and racially polarized voting. And it's not just they put in that report city council districts, but it's also other things like court commission representation in the city council. And that is why I propose that city council members, this is all over, serious look into how they can engage the Latino community. Um, there's a council member who voted in Santa Cruz local as saying, well, if there are elections, then it, the Latinos have not run, and there was a can. And so someone doesn't say there's biased voting on behalf of Latinos. And yet, you know, can we say that is the reason why we've only had one black U.S. president? Because there were other black candidates voting? have to look at the systematic reasons in this city why there is not more Latino running. At $20,000 a month, I, as an educator, when I was working, not run for office. Uh, and even though I have two masters, I have. Thank you for your input. Uh, our next number of public phone number ending in 1705. Hello, Council. Um, thank you for taking my call. And once again, I'd like to thank you all for the hard work staff as well. And I think Paul. Well, it is a hard transition, and as I mentioned before, I actually prefer the at-large that we have now. I don't think that justifies all basically all the insults getting the two percent about. That. With that said, seven app. I personally prefer the one hundred one app. I think it does the best job of communities and interests and neighborhoods together. It's always compromising overall that's one so uh thank you for your time that's all mike thank you thank you for your input on that yeah and i'm looking for one more hand raise here philip good welcome All right, thanks for letting me unmute. Uh, yeah, I, this is real short. All these people that called in and say there's all this racial bias in voting and everything. Hey, the city is 37% white men. There aren't any white men on the council. Okay, you want to call that discrimination? I'm not, but you know, 
that's the way it is. And so, the, you know, those people uh, are wrong. You know, that's always fine. Okay, thank you. Caller and phone number ending in 274. Press to unmute yourself. Yeah. Um, and I'm sorry I don't have all the numbers on my feet. Member coming, giving very close rationale why you decided to unit. Anyway, um, just I don't. I thought um, that uh, Matt, but I, I it's very, and I is that what goes. I, I believe that by the lower west side like that, under the tent, has something in common with us, right? and the Kante, the Latino areas. Uh, so, uh, my is um, so many of them, but ever for race members and lower west side in fact because there's a lot of work class still on the lower west side even though there is gent has very little in common with us. So uh, just wish it had been more social like get involved. I'm yet I have um Anyway, uh, I hope that we're now, yep, very disappointed that carefully work out our recommendation we decided was up for the Thank you for your input. Okay, um, that looks like that concludes our uh, public comment on item number three, seven district map and the one. And And uh, I will bring it to council members. Um, is there anyone who would like to make a motion on the recommendation for a discussion? Council Member Boulder. So for the purposes of furthering discussion, I'd like to make a motion to adopt map 101 for the seven district map and the proposed election sequence to run districts four, five, and six in 2022, and districts one, two, three, and seven in 24. Yes. Sorry, Nancy. Okay, so I'd like to make a motion to adopt map 101 for the seven district. I can email it one for the seven district map. Um, and yeah. Proposed election sequence to run districts four, five, and six in 2022, and in 24, districts one, two, three, seven. Thank you for showing that proposed versus alternate. So, um, selecting the proposed election. Is there a second? Second, Matt Mayor. Second, 
typically have a first wife holder emotion and a second vice mayor Watson. And uh, a discussion on map, map, map 101. Okay. And Mayor. I've been here. I think I'd like to do the ordinance separate because there's one other that would need to be decided on. So if we could just use the map the sequence and then uh, bring the ordinance up as a separate item because that will bring together um, all that what's best. Best. Okay. So we have the attorney's office. Um, my understanding too is that would be the um, best way is focus on the map. The first item is the map election sequence, and then we'll move to that next. Uh, okay, so uh, let's council. Uh, council member discussion, and we have council member coming. Do go ahead, Mayor. Um, I've had discussions with members of the public related to what's on the ballot, where we're currently at six, seven districts, and you know, so people are. So the members of the public are clear this election we're being asked whether they should move forward this sixth district mayor or not and the decision to move forward with seven districts dependent upon the outcome of this upcoming election the six six districts at large mayor fails not only would it be undemocratic for us to change our election by way of ordinance but it would be a violation of the constitution your article 11 section 5 California State Constitution states shall be competent all city charters to provide in addition to those provisions allowable by the by the laws of the state. Number three, conduct city election. Based on the state constitution, we should move should we move forward with this election. This decision require an amendment to the charter which would require a vote. Given that there has been no court determination and we are not bound by law to move forward Given our oath and obligation to uphold the Constitution of the State of California, I'm going to move that we table, I'm going to make a substitute motion, table item number three until after certification 2022 and primary results or indefinitely should the members of the public elect the court with six Council member coming, can we, um, um, we're right now in discussion for the motion that was made on draft map 101. And we um, finish with that first and then go to where you're going. Um, it actually preempts because of forward this um, draft one and vote on um, um, And also I will say that you know, it's a little for me, um, given the last council meeting, it sounded like the rules of engagement that were established were to start with staff recognition. That's not what followed. Um, but, you know, I mean, I'll defer to the city attorney um, process, but um, being able to make a motion to continue uh, would be appropriate this time. So um, in discussing draft map 101, a uh, motion was made and um, you are proposing a substitute motion. Um, I just need clarity on, on your substitute motion. Oh, I sent it to Bonnie. So, um, 
<laughs> Mayor Bruner, I'll just go ahead and second it while we're the Okay, thank you. Second. Someone is talking. Not sure. Okay, we have the motion. And Bonnie, I think it should be clarified that it's the table item number three. Agenda item number three. Like um, one and two kind of and that not a more off. Yeah, and I just just to clarify because it includes not only the map but also the ordinance. That's why I left. One that would take I Oh, well then um, I'd add in sorry. Okay. What's for it? Bird. Pull it. Yeah. Then I guess the um the reason why I said number three is because on the agenda, item number one was the legislative program. Number two was six district math. Number three was. Um, oh. Okay. So A comment, Mayor. If that's okay. Yeah, go ahead, Vice Mayor Watson. Um, I, 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 well, I guess I won't be supporting this motion to table the item, given that we heard from our demographer and staff that that having this is actually a pathway to go, particularly right now, given where we are, from the process that has been sort of ensuing and forthcoming for years at this, point. and then also just a clarification: there wasn't a seven district map recommendation specifically. It just it just indicated that we needed to select a seven district map. So um, for those reasons, bring this. Thank you. Um, so if I, uh, pardon me, oh. Mayor, if I could weigh in real. Yeah. This is this is Tony Fidelia, and I'm listening in my car, and I just got home, so I just wanted to weigh in here. If the motion to table is seconded, then uh, that is not a debatable motion. Uh, so it is in essence the same as a motion to call the question. Um, the council can move directly to voting on the motion to the table. Okay, so we don't vote on whether the substitute motion vote directly. Yeah, it's on. not a it's not a substitute motion. It, a motion to table is a non-debatable motion. It ends discussion on the item. So if that's accepted, then that would just end the discussion uh, of, the, of the item. And if it's not accepted, then the council can proceed to discuss the seven district map and the proposed ordinance. Um, okay, thank you for that clarification. Is that clear for other council members? Um, okay, and... Um, Council member Cummings, I'm still understanding, trying to understand your um, reason for, I, for, I understand your, um, you bringing this regarding the ordinance, seven districts, but the map part, uh, we're tying it together, ordinance and the map, get separate. 
Yeah, hearing from uh, members of the public, uh, the idea was that could this should be going to the public to vote on rather than there was an opportunity for the public to vote on um, whether we would move to seven districts and make that charter amendment. Um, that's not, that hasn't been, um, not where the council is going, um, but members of the public have reached out concerned that all of this should be taken together, that we shouldn't be moving forward with an ordinance map, that this should be going to the public, um, for the public to decide on. And um, it's likely that, um, you know, we'll see what happens with the sixth district, but I think what I've been hearing was that um, they wanted to have an opportunity Weigh in with their votes that uh, they're not going to have an opportunity to do that. They'd like us to continue. So, um, I, th I think that's where I'm a little confused that there wouldn't need to be an ordinate, a uh, charter amendment seven district. I think some members of the public argue that, um, whether we should move forward with the ordinance or whether we should move forward with uh, an amendment to our charter. Our constitution at the state of, in the state of California says, again, that to be competent in all city charters to provide and those provisions allowable by this constitution and by the laws of the state of California for the conduct of the city election. What I've been hearing from members of the public is that um, you know, this is something that was established in the constitution. And as elected officials, even if we do have the opportunity to change something by an ordinance, if it's laid out in our constitution that people should be making decision and that decision shall be codified with the charter that we'll be moving in the direction making sure that it's as democratic as possible when we're making major changes shift to our election process in our, in our local community. Can the uh, attorney comment on that? Well, I guess my first comment is that that sounds like debate. Um, this is not a debatable motion. Uh, on the other hand, an argument made that um, that in order to amend uh, the current at-large system, which is specified by the charter, that a charter is required, and we've analyzed that at fairly great length, and have <clears throat> pointed out that in cases throughout California, um, charter cities have transitioned to district elections by ordinance. Uh, when they've been threatened to uh, with lawsuits under the California Voting Rights Act, uh, or when they have been sued under the California. So there's legal precedent for establishing elections by district in a charter city by an ordinance, even though the charter specifies at large. I understand the legal argument been made, being made. Uh, to date, it hasn't been uh, validated by any reported court decision that that we've uh, or we, we're aware of, um, nor has any such authority been pointed out to us in any of the correspondence that you've received uh, on this uh, on this particular topic uh, for this meeting. So um, I understand the argument, uh, but this is really a procedural table the discussion, um, which should proceed direct to a vote. Okay, so then we will proceed directly. Thank you for clarifying um, that. Thank you, Council Member Cummings. Uh, so we will go directly to a vote of motion to table the um, item number three seven election of a seven district map and election. Um, and we have a roll call vote. Member Kalantari Johnson? No. Hi. Here. Here. What? No. No. Uh, so the motion to table the item not pass by. Uh, so. Council member coming.
Unmuted. Yeah, again, I'll just say, you know, we're in this situation and we're in these circumstances because there was a lawsuit filed um, saying that there's racially polarized voting um, in Latino by Latin by Latinx people in the city of Santa Cruz. And again, similar to what I meant first, um, vote taken was that one of the things that was brought up um, at the last meeting was the fact that we would be reducing that percentage of vote for people um, within, for example, District 4 because um, it was disconnected from a lot of lower, ocean, even parts of upper ocean area. Um, Matt, the staff recommendation that came back to us, Map 101, I actually want to express I appreciate. I think that you all took um, the community concerns into account, um, some of which came in around splitting the west, lower west side into two districts. Um, it took into that account trying to um, keep the Seabright area together, um, to also more of the um, lower ocean and some of the upper ocean corridor, which actually would. The, the Latino vote with the district. And so I just want to express appreciation for what you all did on um, six, seven district maps to really incorporate concern um, and back maps that uh, were reflective of incorporating community brought up. So I, um, I'm much more supportive um, and will not be voting on map 101. Thank you, Council Member Cummings. Um, we are any discussion on that the motion that uh, on this poll of Map One Hundred and One. Council Member Brown. I I just have a question. Um, it sounds like we're gonna ordinance separate. Okay. So I'll just comment that I, and I'm not going to repeat the argument that I've made, that Council Member Cummings has made, and that members of the public have made about um, the dilution of uh, minority and low income voting uh, neighborhood blocks uh, within the map that have been selected by this party. So um, I'm not going to support the motion for it to stop count one hell day for us. Thank you, Council Member Brown. Council members with um, discussion on map one. Okay. Um, So then we go to a roll call vote on the motion to select map 101. And may we have a roll call vote. Was Yeah, it was four, five, and six for 2022, and then one, two, three, seven. No one heard. Aye. Aye. No. No. Myers? Hi. Hi. That motion passes with five in favor and two against. Okay. Um, and then moving on, now select the map and a seven map. And now we will. Move forward with 
the next item select for um, the attorney's office to uh, ordinance that introduce publication and ordinance. I'll just give a little spiel. So we included a draft ordinance in the package. Um, Council has selected different maps than the ones that we put in draft ordinance, fine. Um, so during this meeting, I've been going through and making, you know, red lines that were necessary in order to um, reflect the council selection of the district. So maybe I could share my screen to kind of take you through the changes I made really quick. Would that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Share my screen. You see that? Yes. Okay, so this is the ordinance that was packet, and I'll go through, and I'm on um, section three. So um, where it said so for B, change that to two, which is the council selected um, map, and then have uh, election sequence marked instead of as um instead of the mayor plus four and five we have the mayor plus four and six in 2022 in 2024 we have a district one five going and again i've on uh, section um section three b i go for b two um Going to section four, um, this seven district model, uh, I've changed uh, 101D to just 101, and uh, in section subdivision A1, and in, sub in subdivision A2, uh, that reflects the election sequencing, which is four, five, six for 2022, and then we have one, seven uh, for. So, and then the, where it gets a little bit tricky, <laughs> I want to take you through this. Um, we counted for this uh, potential situation of we have uncertain election results as of July 6th. Um, so, meaning the charter amendment has clearly passed by that date, but at a later date, determined that it actually passed. And so, in that scenario, the city would actually convert initially to seven districts, uh, because we've got to get our district map to uh, the county by that date. Um, so what we would have is um, for November 22, 2022, it would be as if we had seven districts. Um, so we would be going off of 101 and uh, district four, five, and six go forward. That's reflected in subdivision section five um, but then what happens after that is we find out, oh, uh, the voters actually did select Apple. So we would need to basically version over that. So 2024, have an at-large mayor uh, plus um, one, two, five off of uh, map so two going and four. And then six, uh, what we have is um, for three, four, and six in off the map, six, which is model. Um, so, and we sort of looked at the map and uh, came up with that as a way for that basically everybody gets to vote. Um, and there's no skipping over district, district areas. That's and then subdivision B in section five um, talks about um, you know, there's a vacancy um, in the office of council member um, who's been elected in the seven district model, basically off of map 101 um, from district four, five, and six. And those are district elected 
to under this scenario, um, they would be filled by who lives in district three, four, or six, who does basically the same graph. So that was a lot of information and uh, stop sharing now. Um, but I just wanted to take you through those edits different from what is in Otherwise, um, there are no other edits uh, from session. Uh, what was in the, oh, actually, let's see, section, section seven, talk about the code. And again, I've just placed uh, 604 reference before session. Go through this. Those are the only changes, but um, this, thank you. Thank you. Um, council members have questions for city attorney's office. Pastor Bronson, um, like council member Cummings. I wanted to ask again, did, what did the, um, the composition of the um, different election, like which district will be up for the election? I was trying to read it. Um, ordinance that looked like um, I didn't see one seven. I saw four, five, and six, but one, two, seven. Sorry, what's your question? Did it say again? Sorry. When are the um, different districts up seven? Okay. Uh, well, what was seven district? It's 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 going to be reflective of what council elected. I'll go. To, I'll share my. Unmute. Okay, here we go. Um, okay, for the seven, correct. So back up. So on the top of page two. Thank you. Right. So um, seven district. We're going under map one hundred one. And 2022, uh, the choice was for District 4, 5, 6. And then in 24, we got one. And then I guess my next question is, um, I guess it was, I'm a little, is this going to go out public comment and then come back for action or are we at the action? Good question. I'm here to see. Have an opinion on that? Um, I not sure. We did have this um, agenda item along with a, the prior item. So I would like to comment. I'm sorry, <clears throat> Councilmember Cummings. Yeah. So you know, on our agenda, this is kind of all under item number three, <laughs> and right. um, and so I wasn't clear if Mayor has a question. I was just trying to check to see if this is out of comment or if this is time for us to make comment at the act of course my understanding was that this i mean i i would i, I would urge the mayor on that but this is uh listed as an essential action under item three so i believe members of the public had had enough have had enough comment on it but again i would urge the mayor in the Sorry, I was unmuted. Uh, we did the map and the election sequence, but um, not public comment on the ordinance. So this is the question period and about public comment and then back. I have no further questions. Yes. Okay. Any other questions, council members? Ordinance. Okay. Um, so at this time, 
I will bring it out to the public. And the ordinance um, that in the agenda packet with the edit to the relevant map maps that were selected during tonight's meeting have updated in that ordinance as as well as election sequences that were accompanying those maps. And so this is an item uh, if you're a member of the public and this is uh, an item you'd like to comment on, now is time to uh, raise your hand by dialing star nine on your phone, selecting hand in the webinar controls of your computer. And when it's your turn to speak, you'll hear an announcement that's been unmuted and the timer will then be set. if there's any attendees that would like to comment on the ordinance. Not seeing any hands raised. Okay, I will bring it back to council and um, is there anybody who would like to make a motion to move a discussion on the ordinance. Vice Mayor Watson. Yeah, I'm happy to move the ordinance given the update text. We have a motion. Vice Mayor Watkins approved the updated ordinance reflecting those maps. And a, a second. Council Member Myers. Okay. And um, discussion. Any comments from council members? And anybody who hasn't spoken yet, like. Council Member Brown, then Council Member Kenny. Thank you, Mayor Bruner. I was gonna say, I've already spoken as well, but maybe a little bit less. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you. Uh, so I, um, yeah, I'd make a few comments here. Um, before we proceed to the vote, I, I won't be supporting uh, adopting the ordinance. Um, I've, I've made my was on this process. Uh, pretty clear as forward. So I'm just going to try to very share uh, what those are, try to encapsulate those without taking a lot of time. Um, so, you know, I just, one, I, uh, one, you know, I think this is just a fundamentally anti democratic process, denying the voters the right whether or not they want this election structure for our state government is anti-democratic. Uh, it undermine I too, I think it undermined this whole process, uh, the way it's quickly, um, and the gymnastics that I'm seeing staff go through and our legal counsel go through to try to try to get this done in a way that really kind of stills the bill prior to a vote of the people. Um, it really undermines the Charter process, and I think right to charter. Health. I understand our legal counsel argued that the CRA Health Voting Rights Act Trump charter, uh, but I don't think the case law is here, and I think that you know we'll we'll, we'll learn more forward. Uh, unfortunately, we'll be late if we go this route. Um, three, uh, adopting an ordinance. Seven districts just not necessary at the time. Really, kind of repeating serves to reinforce that that the false choice that voters. Um, the ballot language staff for a yes or no on district plus an at large mayor, and you've got to go in and analysis her that okay, well, you know, vote no, then it's seven districts. 
everybody I've talked with learning about this says they can't even wrap their minds around that. They don't understand it. They don't get the, that choice. I think that that, um, that message is, well, this is kind of a sleeper issue thus far, part because I'm forced to go along with discussion. So I, it's hard to imagine that our process. Uh, it doesn't have to be this way. <laughs> it doesn't. Um, you know, instead, steps uh, about how we move forward for fair representation. That was really our interest. Fair representation. Think about rank. About other mechanisms. Talk with. People. Go into. It. Talk with people about their. Of that. Um, but what we're doing here is not about fair representation, as far as I can tell. And um, it's unfortunate. I'm very dismayed uh, by the way this process unfolded. Block ordinance right now without hearing. Like, very disingenuous to put it before the voters. I recognize that very within the legal as as set up by our our legal advisors um, but there's just so much more we can be doing you know, I, I think it's, there's a missed opportunity well. thank you council member Brown uh, I would just like to um, say you know, this whole process, um, as as a new council member coming in, an already given situation, um, and you know the options for us are very limited in terms of a path forward. And um, so, uh, you know, I understand um, some of the public input and comments feeling behind closed doors. Um, it has been a, a very limited process in terms of what our options have have been presented in in that we are moving to district elections. Um, and so here we are trying to make um, decisions based on all of the input we to date, and there's been quite a few um, members of the public who have uh, written us, emailed about, filled out today, and um, are at this in ways that forward, um, you know, with the best representation that we can given this forced situation. And um, so thank you for your comment. Um, Council member coming. Yeah, I'll just, one thing I'll point out briefly, I think I made a lot of my comments around what we should do in terms of trying to create and have a very clear democratic process. Um, but, you know, one of the things that came up with the staff that there is the potential that um, that we may be in a position where we'll have to forward seven districts and then shift six districts um, in 2024 in an at-large pair if we can't get the votes certified in time. And that was actually one of the reasons that um, folks brought up as to why we should move forward with six districts direct election pair now is to avoid that from happening. And here we're just now being told by staff that that might be the outcome. We'll move to seven districts. And I just want to say that, you know, there was a really good opportunity for us to ask voters, we want to move to seven districts or not. And if they voted yes, that would be a charter amendment. It would be consistent with the California state constitution. Um, and also ask if they wanted to do a direct election mayor, in which case we could have continued to have engagement, conversation around the role of the mayor station what um, they would do and um, and also I think there is some concern around the fact that you know, there's the potential for overrepresentation with the mayor being 
discovered um, and that having an on how decisions. So um, I guess the last thing I'll say on the seven issue with regard to the ordinance is that um, you know more work six districts doesn't pass we're in a position where we have seven districts there's a lot of work that still need um, you know, currently the city council um, elects the um, mayor and vice mayor based on how many votes but we'll be in a situation where there will be people representative of different districts they'll all be the highest it will be, um, I think everybody will feel entitled to. So, so I think it, moving forward, um, as we continue to work just like really come up with process, how we're our mayor and vice, should we end up with seven districts? And um, that's something that I think we really need in mind because should we not address that ourselves in a very, um, Difficult situation. Should we end up? And I will leave my comments there. Um, yeah, um, not going to be supporting the ordinance, but I want to thank everyone for all the work they've done over the past. Thank you, Council Member Kane. Um, I think there will definitely be some next steps um, and in uh, process. In terms of the example you brought up, uh, mayor, vice mayor, and um, once we, you know, get to that next step, having those discussions. Council Member Boulder. No, oh, thank you. And any other council members? Discussion before we go to a vote on the ordinance. Yeah. So um, we have a motion by Vice Mayor Watts, seconded by Councilmember Myers on the ordinance agenda packet. We have a roll call vote. Aye. 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 No. No. Here. Aye. Here, watch. Aye. Uh, that motion passes by current. Okay. Um, that does conclude our agenda items today. Thank you, everybody, for for input and comments, and we will continuing this work. Uh, next step, the, um, the website on this we will also be up and running. Mard, are you still here? I sure am. Talk about the next step that you know of so far. Um, well, you mentioned the website. Um, Doug can speak to this more than I can, but my recollection is that we're actually required to maintain the content on our website. Ten years, Doug? That's the, the standard practice. Um, well, in, in this case, it'll be nine years till the next. Got it. Um, and then we will do uh, a second reading of the ordinance, uh, I, which will be uh, a public meeting. Um, and so we will notice that website as well um, as soon as I confirm that that is probably made. Um, but I will that that date and information all be uh, kept updated on our website, and um, then this then 
there will be the June election ballot measure for the voters to decide whether it's a six or seven district election. We just had that that interactive map that we looked at earlier. I already have the title so that the council select six map, council select seven district both list for Great, thank you. Um, okay, thank you so much. Uh, this meeting is now done. Have a good evening. <laughs>